Hey, welcome back, friends. Ah, look at this beautiful piece of nature here. Of course, you can tell that's not that's not the great outdoors or anything. Of course, it's not. No, it's a paludarium, an aquarium with an island in it, and it's even got a little creek. You see, I intended to do something like this two weeks ago when I made that aquarium stand, and now here's the video of how I made it happen for, of course, next to no money. First off, I found these very interesting moss-covered bricks in the garden. Well, I don't know about you, but I always love the aesthetic of forgotten or ancient human things being reconquered by nature. And these old bricks just make the perfect material for that kind of a setting. With a rough sketch of that little ruin in place, I tried out whether an old aquarium filter I had lying around was strong enough to move water high enough to make a little waterfall. And you see, it does. Next up was time to clean up the tank, which was probably never intended to hold water. It used to be the bottom of a gerbil cage. So I decided to apply an additional layer of aquarium-friendly silicone. I masked the four the edges with masking tape, applied one bead all the way around and smoothed it out with soap water. It's the first time I tried this masking technique and I must say it really pays off. Look how smooth that looks. As a next step I used two pieces that I cut from salvaged window pane to raise the glass in the corner where the island is supposed to go, so I could pile the soil there a bit higher. I also glued the attachment for the filter into place using silicone because those suction cups have really stopped working a long time ago. It's an old filter. Now for the brick wall of the island, I decided to connect the whole thing with actual concrete. And of course I should have used mortar, but I didn't have any at hand, but right around the corner there's a construction site and that day the guys were pouring stair steps there and I just went over with a little bucket in my hand and asked them for a bit of concrete. Now as you see, it's got fairly coarse gravel in it, so it's really not mortar for bricklaying. But with this little backfill you see me apply here, the whole thing still dried out into a fairly sturdy and that really heavy shape and I must say the coarse gravel makes it look kind of ancient in a way and it also provides lots of complex surface for tiny organisms to settle on. I kind of like it. Now this is how it turned out and as it is now it's not safe for use in an aquarium at least not with the kind of fish I intend to keep in it. Because concrete makes water more alkaline so I put it in a little tub, filled that up with rainwater, and then tested the pH of the water. It's the second square from the right on this test stripe. You see it's, it's bright yellow here, which means it's fairly acidic water. But after one night in the tub, the test strip gives me a hue of red that's not even on the scale. This is what fish keepers call liquid rock. So I took the thing out, replaced the water, and soaked it again for a couple hours. And after that, the test turned out a lot better. You see, it's back to the original. Now with that out of the way, I proceeded to install the filter, glue that piece of piping there in place, and then installed the wall properly. I left a gap between the brick wall and the glass of the tank, and glued pieces of filter sponge in between there, which will keep debris from clogging up the filter and serve as habitat for beneficial microbes later on. Now with that thing installed, I could focus on the rest of the hardscape, the part of aquarium decoration that's not alive. Now for that, of course, I had more pieces of brick and also a few shards of roofing tiles and flower pots Storeboard driftwood for aquariums is too expensive for my taste. So I tried out something else. This stuff here 
is really this. Sometime in the last winter, when walking the dog, I noticed that the weird branches in these hedges would make a really cool aquarium decoration. And shortly after that thought came to me, I noticed I break like a damaged part of one hedge right around the corner of my house. Nobody seemed to care about the pieces that lay there broken. So I picked them up. Now, for the subsoil in the tank, I use potting mix. And it's the kind that's intended for seedlings and herbs, which has a reduced concentration of fertilizer. With that in place, I proceeded to try out different arrangements for my brick pieces here. I ended up with this one. That looked alright to me, with that little Stonehenge pathway gate thing for the fishies to swim under. Once I was happy with the layout, I glued the pieces in place using silicone. Now, that garden soil, that potting soil, needs covered with something heavy or it floats up because it's got such a big amount of organic matter in it. For that purpose, I used plain old sand. Nothing fancy really, the kind of sand that's used in playgrounds. After that, I tried out different arrangements with those pieces of wood. You see that they still have their bark on them. This will lead to the growth of some bacterial carpet later on. But that's really nothing to be afraid of. You can just wipe that off or suck it off when you do water changes. Now with all that arranged, I took care of that land part. First act was to find some gravel in the yard clean it thoroughly and afterwards clean the sink thoroughly very important and after that was done i filled that compartment with a filter and it up with the gravel i covered that with a piece of landscaping fleece which is apparently made from recycled plastic bottles and i used that as a barrier for another layer of that potting mix during the piling up of the dirt, I noticed that the tube of my filter arrangement there would be too short, so I replaced it with a longer one. Then I turned this big clay shard into three smaller ones with my favorite piece of equipment and arranged those into a little stair step shape that would make a good waterfall. And you see, a first test run proves, yeah, most of the water goes into the right direction. Now for planting that island part, I just used grass from the garden. Like simple old lawn grass and some moss that also grew by the garden pond. This little plant here is also from outside. Now I've got something special growing in the big aquarium on that glass ledge right in front here. And that's a tropical kind of liverwort, which is an interesting organism really. It's not quite a moss. It's more simple still. For the underwater part, I went over to Vitaly's aquarium, say hi to Vitaly, to pluck some baby java fern, which is growing on the leaves of the mother plants and you can just pick them up. On the occasion, I also pulled out a bit of moss. Now in the municipal park right around the corner here, I noticed this interesting aquatic plant. I have no idea what it is, but decided to just give it a try. And then, of course, there's something else still. You know what this is called? Süßwassertang. Can you say that word, Mom? Süßwassertang. <laughs> For all you non-German speakers, that's how it's pronounced. I planted the fern and the moss on the hardscape of the tank using cyanoacrylate superglue and patience. And once that was done, and some final touches applied to the land part, which I kept moist, I kept spraying the plants, at least the water plants, so they wouldn't dry out, it was time to put the thing in its final place and fill it up with water. 
I use a plastic bag to protect the decoration from the force of the water as I pour in bucket after bucket. This tank holds about 40 liters or 10 gallons. Of course, it's fairly flat. Now with the water in place, I proceeded to plant those mystery plants and then start at the pump and see, the creek is flowing. I added some floating plants from one of the other aquariums and this extra pretty piece of moss which I found on another walk. And finally, I went down to the garden pond and picked up a bunch of our local kind of liverwort which naturally occurs in a free-floating kind. Riccia flutens is what it's called. If it's attached to a moist surface and left there by itself, it transforms into a very decorative, emerged kind of form. After a week or so, you see how everything has started to grow in. Mystery plant is taking over like crazy. This is the beautiful, immersed kind of the local liverwort. Tannins leaking from the wood have started to give the water this reddish tinge, which is really nothing to worry about. We're still gonna wait though with stocking it with fish. For now, this is what it looks like. And for once I can say, if I may say so myself, I'm pretty pleased with the result. I, I, I think it turned out nice. Well, I hope you liked it too. See you soon and until then, stay healthy.